Hey everyone, we are back finally. It feels like it's been forever. Anyway, today, if it goes long enough, we'll be doing a two part tutorial, but hopefully we can keep it inside of one. Hopefully. Anyway, we're doing a beautiful piece that looks like that. Now, the doodling and stuff is of course up to you and to do it how you like. Um, but the rose inside of this golden gem is what we're doing. So, let's get started. This, um, I don't really know where it was inspired from. I think I just sat down and started coloring. But, um, here's what I'm using. And, uh, I'll tell you what you can use. This is a card course it's a tile so it's uh, quite a bit toothier than your normal paper so I'm going to be doing extra layers that you may not need to be doing so just keep that in mind because mine will take a lot more layers to get it nice and smooth like I want than yours probably will as for the rows inside it does not take a lot to do these. I'm going to be using um, a Derwent Ink Tense in Poppy Red. Uh, if you don't have Derwent Ink Tense, that's cool. Use anything that is water-based. Um, use a marker. You could use watercolor. You could use, you know, a red pen. Anything that's going to basically soak into the paper and not be like messed up as soon as you like color over it with the color pencil. So you can use pretty much anything. Uh, and roses like this are very simple. It's basically just an oval at the top. Each side comes in just a bit and then comes out kind of like a little bulb. And then this goes across like that. And then you'll do some like little just kind of scribbles in there. Okay. Not hard at all. Then what you're going to do, for me at least, is I've got my little thing of water here and a paintbrush. I should don't have a little thing of water. I'm putting a water drop on my desk. Don't do what I do. And I'm just going to get that red to come to life. Just like that. I wanted that kind of fade into a little bit of other color, which is why I've used the Derwent Ink Tense. Um, and that's basically all you need to do with that. I'm not, I have to let it dry for just a second before I go over it with um, a pen. So while it dries for a second, I'm gonna grab my colors and we can start our gem. Um, let's see, I have Ivory, green gold, uh, let's see, Naples yellow, burnt sienna, walnut brown, and brown ochre. Uh, yeah, I think that's everything that I used in my other one over here. So, green gold is kind of what I'm going to use to start working out the gem and like this one I want it to come down a little farther and do an oval around it so it'll come down a little farther and I want the oval to go around it so I'm just going to sketch out where I want the oval to be and just take little strokes and just kind of Eyeball it. You don't have to be perfect. Just like that. I'm going to start. 
putting in a bit of a base for color. Just very lightly going on top of everything. You can see by how much you can see the paper, how toothy this is. Or how much you can see the card. But I've learned that I really, really like these tiley things. Just because they do hold so much pigment and tooth. And you can do so many layers. And the more layers you can do, like, it seems the more rich and vibrant it feels. To me, at least. So, I like doing lots of layers. Um, my normal cardstock will not take as many layers as this will. But that's okay. I like my cardstock too. Okay, so just kind of going to do that. This is again where my shadow is going to be. I'm going to bring this down a little bit more. Just like that. And then, let's try enough. I'm gonna grab my, I have a pigment liner. Um, anything that's uh, just basically any kind of ink pen will work just fine. And I just want to outline here. Sort of where the uh, outside of the rose is and the petals. Just come around here. Then just do some nice little squiggly lines in here. And everybody goes, Wow, how'd you do a rose? And it's like, yeah, it's a couple of squiggly lines, and it's basically the suggestion, and your brain pretty much does the rest. So, I'm going to do some little, like, squiggle line leaves. You can impress all your friends. <laughs> um, I, I've always loved roses, and I've always noted they have, like, this little bulb down here. I'm going to draw in my little bulb and then just give it a little stem just like that okay really super easy now we're going to use Hold up, y'all. Don't roll everywhere. Naples yellow. And come down in here. Right across the rose. Because you'll be able to see it through the colors anyway. You'll be able to see it a little bit less if you're using Prismacolors, just because they are much more opaque than Polychromos are. So, just keep that in mind. If you're using a wax-based pencil, then um, it will be covered up a little bit more than if you're using an oil base. But it should be fine. You should still be able to see it. So, And I'm using the Ivory to do the lightest part down here. And notice I'm overlapping all the colors because I want them to all blend really, really well together. If you're hearing background noise, that's one of the cats playing in the corner. I would love it if they understood that when I was recording, they should be quiet, but they don't. This is, oh, sorry, green gold. A 
again. So I just want to get a little bit more of this color going. This is not quite the same couple of colors that I use in my gold tutorial on YouTube. Um, but that's just because I wanted a bigger range of color um, for this gem versus just like four, I think it's three or four colors that I have on there. Those are still my go-to colors though, and I think they're all in this. I know walnut brown, sienna brown, and I'm pretty sure it's Naples yellows if it's not dark Naples yellow and ivory. So I think it's about the same, but I just have a couple extra in here. All right, let's start getting this darker. Um, going for the burnt sienna, not brown sienna, it's burnt sienna. I'm actually going to leave a tiny bit of the lighter gold around here. Just because I feel like it gave this, it was unintentional on this one, but I felt like it gave this one kind of like a little bit of a glow. So I want to do that again. So I'm using ovals as my motion here. Normally I do try and do ovals or circles or something like that. Helps with the blending pencil on pencil. And just bringing out this shadow. I want to be nice and dark and really get that feeling. But we'll work at it to get it dark. It won't be right away. I do of course want to take it down, get our edge darker. Well, our sort of our sort of almost edge. How about that? Looks alright so far. I'm going to go ahead and give this a clearer edge here. Here's where we're really going to start getting into layers and seeing it get more vibrant. It's about how I want the shadow to look. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, what we're going to do is go to the walnut brown and go real dark up here. But again, you want to softly bring it out. So you use more pressure here. And then as you bring it out a little bit, you use a little bit less pressure. And that's just how you're going to get some gradation, nice blending in there. It's all about pressure. Well, and multiple layers, I guess. I usually don't use almost any pressure. Like, really. Because the more pressure you use, the quicker my hands will hurt. So, since I prefer to color for longer periods of time, I don't like to use a lot of pressure. Ah, okay. So, 
This one is the brown ochre. And I have a kind of blunt tip on it. It needs to be sharpened, but for right now, it will do what I want. I'm just going to go over the shadow and start bringing it in a little bit more. I'm going to be bringing this color a little bit further in to just help add vibrancy to this whole thing as each layer will. And let's go back up to the Naples yellow. And this can go over everything. So you're starting to see some of the white of the tile go away. And I'm using a little bit harder pressure here because I really want to actually move some of the pigment of the other pencils as well. So I do also, of course, have my uh, odorless mineral spirits here, which I will be using possibly at just the end, just to make sure I really get that nice soft blend. And then I'm going to go up to the cream and really work at our light spot here to get it nice and gently blended into everything else. pretty good and I'm gonna go back up to the green gold like I said this one takes a lot more layers than it probably would with um, just cardstock or whatnot but that's okay like I said I really love the look of it so I'm totally willing to do lots more layers I think that looks pretty good. Let me go back to some burnt sienna. Just do some more. Mm, no. Just go back. Let's stay with green gold for a second and get it up here around all the edges. Then we'll do the burnt sienna again and see how it looks. Because I want the edge to be green gold like I had it on the other one.
Yeah, that looks really nice so far. Let me go back to the walnut brown and just see if I can get this a little bit deeper here. You always want that contrast in your gems. You want dark to be really nice and dark. You want lights to be really light. Because that gives you that whole feeling. I'm just going to go ahead and bring this down farther than I had it. Might as well go all the way around, right? Right. Yeah. Since I used green gold as my base, I'm going to use that to blend this as well. All right, that's how I like it. And then I'm gonna grab my odorless mineral spirits wherever they went. Ha, do you guys know my little brown pot? And I have a little paper stumpy thing. This is actually the back end because the front had purple on it. And I'm gonna start in the lightest area. And then slowly build to the darker areas. And this takes no pressure because the odor odorless mineral spirits does all the work. You're just rubbing it on there. Kind of like buffing it or polishing it. Just like that. Which looks gorgeous. And I think this could be a little bit smoother. A little bit. I'm going to use my cream. And just go over it. Oh, that's not cream. This is ivory. My bad, guys. Just to give it that glow. Yeah, I think that came out pretty well. For up here to blend a little bit more, I'm gonna use the Naples yellow because I don't want it to look too, too light from the ivory. All right, just like that, and then get out one of your trusty gel pens. If you have a gel pen. Um, if you don't have a gel pen or you can't ever get yours to work, I do have a couple of videos on YouTube about getting your pens to work and what I use and what I've seen other people use. You can use anything from um, a Posca pen to a little bit of white acrylic or something like that. My uniball is like over here like nope. So we'll switch to the jelly roll. Just do it like that. On some thin ones right around the edge.
I'm gonna have to come back in. Grab one of my darker colors and fix this one because that one is not okay. Just like that. And with one of the liner pens, I've just gone around the edge of it to kind of just really solidify the edge of it. And then I just kind of went a little bit on the crazy side with the doodles. So figure out how you want to doodle around this and go absolutely crazy with it. I cannot wait to see what you do with it. And I'll see you next time. Bye.